Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build an ancient Roman temple in Minecraft. Let's get started. So some of you may have seen my previous Roman temple tutorial, which is for this smaller building over here. But today we're going to be doing the larger version over here. The portico of this one has six columns, whereas this one over here only has four. It also has a complete and different interior, which I'm going to be showing you how to build today also. And let's take a little walk around the building before I give you the materials list you're going to need to gather. You can see along here, we it's quite a, a large structure and we have a generous amount of space on the inside. The outside is fairly regular and ornamented. And it is quite a lot of materials. But I think you will be able to gather these. And if you have previously built the smaller Roman temple, you can now clear out a space right beside it and build a larger version of it. So let's go inside and take a look here. As you can see, we have our stairs going up to our colonnaded porch area here. And we also have in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to build a 3x3 piston door that you can put inside this. And as you can see, the interior in here is really something special. Not something you see in your normal everyday Minecraft base. But this would definitely be suitable for a very large storage room, I would think. You could have all your chests around here on the glass floor, which if you have shaders or something enabled like I do, then you will see all the nice, pretty reflections we have going on here. And also, the glass serves a double role with making everything in here spawn-proof. Because as you can see, there is not a single mob walking around in here. So it should be nice and safe for you to use in survival. As you can see, we also have a golden coffered ceiling up there. As well as some fine and elegant glowstone chandeliers hanging down from the roof here. And we also have a fairly generous amount of hidden lighting here and there. I have had to place down some torches here and there, but I put them in places that from the ground here, you don't immediately see them when you walk in the room from the door. Because uh, hiding lighting and everything is always a challenge to do in Minecraft, especially when playing in survival, but it's just something that you have to do. So, let's uh, go over here and take a look at the bill of materials you are going to need to construct this building. Now, before I do the list, bear in mind that this is going to be a worst-case scenario, meaning that when I build things, as you can see, they're all solid and I spare no expense on the materials. But, if you're going to be doing this in survival, which I imagine many of you are, you can get away with being more economical on your use of materials than I have. So, as I've said, bear in mind these numbers here are going to be a worst-case scenario. So, to start with, you will need 5,919 blocks of diorite, 30,103 blocks of cobble, 13,896 stone bricks, 1,139 chiseled stone bricks, 2,684 blocks of red nether brick, 2,656 cobblestone stairs, 2,806 stone brick stairs, 4 blocks of polished black stone for the 3x3 piston door, 793 blocks of obsidian, 786 blocks of lapis, both of these are for the floor that we just looked at, 747 blocks of gold for the ceiling, 1,480 blackstone slabs, 65 smooth stone slabs, 265 stone brick slabs, 196 cobblestone slabs, 8 blocks of netherrack, 393 blocks of glowstone, 118 torches, 1,570 blocks of black stained glass for the floor, 490 blocks of blue stained glass, 
487 blocks of light blue stained glass panes, which are going to be for the windows, 231 cobblestone walls, 84 nether brick fences, 12 sticky pistons, 6 stone pressure plates, 3 redstone repeaters, 31 redstone dusts, and a partridge in a pear tree. So with that out of the way, while you're collecting those materials, I think we will start with the building. And then after that, I will go over at the end the 3x3 three three piston door as an addenda, if you want to add that. And I'll also look inside the smaller temple over there, as I neglected to add that to the tutorial I did on that building. However, you want to first clear a space for your new Roman temple. And the measurements for this from here all the way over here is going to be 49 blocks. And from here all the way down here is going to be 90 blocks. So to reiterate that, it is 49 blocks wide and 90 blocks long. So when you're measuring out your base, measure it more than once to make sure you get the dimensions accurate. Otherwise, you're going to have a very bad time when you find out you're off by one block on something this large. Now, the format of this particular tutorial is going to be each slice I'm showing you of this building is going to be built up two blocks taller than the previous slice. Meaning that starting with the foundation here, the next step up, you can see it's two blocks taller. And the next step after that will be two blocks taller than that. And so on and so forth until we get all the way up to the top of the golden finale there on the top of the pediment. So let's start, I think, uh, around back here will be the easiest thing to start with because you're going to want to build up a little wall of red stone bricks pretty much right here and on top of that put a layer of cobble and if you're doing this in survival remember you can leave this part hollow and you're going to want to do this around the entire base except for here at the front and the measurements for the front here you want to have a little setback from four blocks, then you want to put a three block thing wide here of stone and cobble. And then you want to leave a three block gap and put in some cobblestone stairs and then continue the walls back and around. And on the sides here, you want to put in more stone stairs here, except you want to have that be six blocks wide. And you want to count out another three blocks here and start building the front stairs as you see described here. Now, I should remark at this point, this building has a center line, meaning that I think it's around here. If you place a block over here, you want to mirror the exact same block on this side over here. And you can see that with the stairs that we're doing here. It's the same design that we did over here, except it's just mirrored. And as always, during the tutorial, if I'm moving too quickly, just pause the video and look at what I'm showing you very carefully and replicate the pattern of blocks that you see on the screen. Uh, except for the cows, so we don't want to be replicating those. And also back here, we start to put in the foundations for what is going to be the 3x3 piston door. And I should probably give you some measurements on exactly where that is going to be. It looks like from the front, and it's slightly offset, we are going to have this be from here all the way to the excuse me i'm trying to make a video here um from here is going to be 19 blocks going to be that distance there however you can if you want to just skip the piston door at this phase as i said i'm going to go over that in more detail later on 
and you can just hollow out the space that we're going to be putting in it with the door. If you don't want to measure it at this point, we're going to be getting to that point over here fairly quickly. So, with that first phase finished, we can now move on to the next one. We're going up two more blocks, and we're putting on a, another layer of stone bricks around the edges here. And on top of that, we're putting in some cobblestone stairs. And you're also, at this point, going to want to cover over if you've been leaving the underside hollow here. Uh, this part along here, at least, with cobblestone. Because as you can see, we're also going to start putting in the floor momentarily after we talk about the details around the stairs here. So over here, we're putting in another two block tall flight of cobblestone stairs. It's following the line that goes around here. And you're going to be putting in some stone bricks. And on top of those, you're putting in some chiseled stone bricks here. And you're filling it in from side to side over here with just some cobblestone stairs, like so. And on the side here, we have a little detail of stairs and cobblestone stairs stacked on top of each other, arranged in this little pattern here. It's just sort of a decorative element off to the side here, because over here, momentarily, we're going to be putting in our fire pot, which is why I had you collect the nether rack earlier. So I'll give you a good view of the stairs here. Remember, it's the same on both sides. And after that, we need to talk about going back here and putting in the floor. So the floor at this stage, it has the layer of black glass covering it. But below that, you can see that we have a repeating pattern of glowstone, lapis, and obsidian. Now, I've formed this pattern to fit directly under the floor and not have too much of a waste of materials, but I'll give you some measurements on this side to help you get that correct. But let's go back here and give you a view of what the floor layers compromise. As you can see, we've got this repeating pattern here. It's mostly just a cross-hatching of obsidian and glowstone in the middle of that, and the rest of it's filled in with lapis. Of course, if you don't want to farm all the lapis, as it can be an expensive material, along with the obsidian. In place of the obsidian, you can use either basalt or polished blackstone, and in place of the lapis, you can use, if you want to, an additional amount of red nether brick, would look nice underneath here. But this is your building, so you can choose the materials and colors to suit your own individual tastes. And over the top of that, of course, we're going to be putting a layer of black stained glass blocks. And from the back here, if you have your center line, which should be somewhere around here, from the edge here is going to be, it looks like that that is uh, five blocks to get to this section here. And directly underneath the columns and everything, I haven't put additional black stained glass, but I have put additional obsidian. Because over here, these are going to be end up being the column bases on the inside. But to help mesh with the black glass, I put an additional band of black obsidian around all the corners here. So I'll give you a good view of this around here. I think this is also five blocks from side to side here. So I will give you a slow panning view around this and do your best to replicate the pattern that you see done here. As you can see, it's a very regular pattern. And around here towards the front, we've got a smaller detail here around our entrance. And you can see we're just beginning to cover up the wiring down there for the 3x3 piston door. And our center line is going through right there.
All right, with this phase completed, the entire base of the building should be complete, so we can now start building the temple itself. And to do that, we are going to start putting in the column bases, which are going to be this 2x2 two two pillar here, surrounded on either sides by two more blocks on all four sides to make a cross pattern like that. And you're going to start putting those in, I think, like around here, like so. Building those up two blocks. You want to start on the bottom with a layer of stone bricks. And then on top of that, you want to put a layer of cobblestone. And every pillar I've used in this building is the exact same design. So once you build one of these, you will see how to do all the other ones that we're going to be doing in the building. Because this is a building with quite a few of these pillars also, and also these pilasters on the side here. And fun fact, the freestanding columns out here are called pillars, but when they are attached to a wall, like we're going to be doing over here, they are called pilasters, because they are mostly just decorative and not really load-bearing. So the general spacing for all of these columns is going to be four blocks apart. And that is going to be a rule throughout the entire building. You can see we've got a four block spacing here, another four block spacing here. The only time we break this is in the middle here. It is five blocks because our center line comes through and we can't have a center line on a building that has even numbers in it, which is why our building is 49 blocks wide and not 48. So, as I've said, you want to start over here with your column. And then four blocks apart from that, you want to build another column. Another four blocks, another column. Five blocks, another column. Four and a column, and four and a column. And once you have done that, you will have the bases set up for the front portico. And just repeat that again back here. Except in between these, we want to start filling in the walls, as you can see here with cobblestone and stone bricks. And you want to do this all along the building, all the way to the back, and all the way along the back. And also on the interior here as well, you want to do the same thing. And I believe you want to make this uh, four blocks thick, is the thickness of the wall here. Except on the front here, it gets somewhat thicker. Let's go ahead and measure this out for you. And also, the, the columns on the inside here are laid out slightly differently at this front area than they are at the back. So I could squeeze in a few more, except for the ones at the front here. So the walls over here, it looks like they're going to be eight blocks thick. So that is how far back you will want to set this. It's pretty much in line with the column wall here, except it's extended back across these columns here, and we want to add in an ad additional column inside here with a two block gap in between those there, and we also have some side columns that we're going to be putting in over here. So, with that said, let's take a little look at the door here, because you can go ahead and start putting in the frame of chiseled stone bricks here, and some stone pressure plates here. And of course, the door is non-functional at the moment, because it's not completely finished. But two blocks back from that, you're going to be putting your 3x3 piston door, and then another two blocks, and then more chiseled stone bricks. But at the moment, you can just fill in the door itself here with the blocks. And we, as I've said, we'll go over the redstone for it later. So once you have done with this phase, let me go up here and give you a good top-down, slow-panning view. So you can see what we've done in this phase. Make sure and measure everything, that all your columns are appropriately measured and built out correctly. And once that is done, we can move on to the next phase, I think. 
Well, hang on. Let's go over here. We need to take a look at these side things. All we've done to finish off the side details here is we put on some more cobblestone stairs here and a block of chiseled stone bricks on top of that. And along here, we've done the same thing. We put on some stairs here and some more chiseled stone bricks there, except it's a two by two over here. And of course, this is the same on both sides, which finishes this here, by the way, so I won't remark on this again. But what we do have to do in this next phase over here is to build the little fire pot, which is why you need the nether rack. Uh, conversely, you can also use campfires inside of this if you don't want to use the nether rack. But on top of that, you just place some upside down cobblestone stairs and then some cobblestone slabs on top of those. And it will give you a nice little design for a fire pot over here. And over here I have a, a lit version that you can see here. Because it's not very often you get to use a nether rack for its intended purpose. But in this building we do have a little bit of it. So, let's go over here. Let's take a look at the column base. And now for those of you that have built my buildings before, you will know this by heart. But you're putting on right side up stone brick stairs, and then on top of that you're putting in upside down cobblestone stairs. And of course, if you build one column, you build all the other ones in exactly the same way. The same goes for the pilasters over here, except when they attach to the wall. But you also want to extend the stone bricks along the sides here like that, and you want to start setting the wall back a block with just a layer of cobblestone here. And as I go along, I'm not going to remark on them directly, but you can see where I'm placing the torches along here for lighting. So you can do the same in your building as well. And we're building up the 3x3 door along here. We have little light here and a little lintel with some upside down stairs and two more blocks of chiseled stone bricks you want to do the exact same on the interior around here and for the interior also you want to do the same thing i said about wrapping the stone brick stairs around like so and you want to have the inside and the outside versions of the pilasters be exactly the same and you can also see at this phase, we're also starting to put in the windows. And for this window design, let me briefly explain. How I generally do windows is I don't put in just a straight sheet of glass anymore. I used to do that, but there is a better way. Um, just, just pretend the red wool here is the blue stained glass here, and the cobble is going to be the panes. So you want to take a different color. Preferably a light blue stained glass or whichever color you prefer. You can make them a kaleidoscope colors if you want to. But you want to have a pane here, except on the next level up, you're going to see that we're going to put the panes on the outside. And then we're going to stagger them around like so. And that is how we're going to do these four block wide windows, except on the back here. We do it a little differently. We will be putting in the glass in that arrangement there, except it's going to be in a 5x5, five five, as you can see here. Now, this is a common technique I use on pretty much all my stained glass windows these days, actually. So, we'll give you a view around the back here. As you can see, we've got three windows in the back. And on the side here, this is going to be solid, like it's going to be on the front corners. And we have, I think, uh, six windows on the sides here, and they are all identical to each other. This is the front here. And I'll give you a top-down view of this face that we have going here. I know it's slow going to start with, but once we start going up with the pillars over here, these phases are going to go fairly quickly. 
but we have to make sure that our building gets started off on the right foot. Uh, now, I should remark a little bit on the corners in here. It gets a little complicated. We bend in a little here. And I think the best way I can explain it to you is just to have you look at it here. Because we have some, we have a column base over here and the column base over here, except we have a bit of a wall that's going in in between those back here. And also, let's go around here and take a look at the front again. We have our columns that are going in along here. You can see the column bases. And I think that that is everything covered in this particular phase here. So we can move on to the next one, where we're going to be finishing the bases of the columns. And we will start erecting the column drums, which, as you can see, is going to be what you collected all the diorite for. So to finish these, all you do is put some right-side-up cobblestone stairs on top of the upside-down ones, and then put a 2x2 two two block of diorite on those, and we're going to be continuing these straight up for the next several phases, so I'm not going to remark on this directly. What I am going to tell you, though, is another technique I use, which is around here, one of the things I do to add extra texture to my buildings is I alternate the walls with banded cobblestone and stone bricks, meaning that for every one layer of cobblestone, I put in another layer, two blocks tall of stone bricks, and then one block tall of cobblestone, another two block tall layer of stone bricks, and from here on out, you will see that this is a rule that I use in constructing this particular building, as indeed all of my other Roman structures as well. And this is something that you can incorporate in your buildings also. So let's go over here and look at the door. We're putting on a lintel of chiseled stone bricks here. And on top of that, we're putting on some stone brick stairs on top of that, connecting to the columns there. And on the inside here, you want to do almost the same. You want to have the lintel of chiseled stone bricks, but you want to have an upside-down lintel of stone stairs on the inside, which is a little bit of a different change. As you can see on the inside here, we're starting to put in our column drums, the same that we're doing on the outside along here. We're leaving the space blank for the windows here. Of course, we have four block wide windows, and then four block wide walls, then window, then wall, then window, then wall, all the way to the back. And as you can see, here is the window pattern I was describing. I don't know how easy this is to see on the video with the shaders, but that's why I described it to you using the red wool and cobble, because it was easier to see that way. So you want to do your windows and your columns and your windows and your columns all the way back to our wall here. Filling in the wall on both sides, another window here, the five block wide center window here. And of course, this side is exactly the same as the other side along here. So I'll give you a good top down view of what we've done here. Because once we've gotten to this phase, it's going to go up very quickly from this point because the easy parts are that you just come along on top of what you've done and put in another 2x2 two two block of diorite on top of all of your columns. Start extending up your walls using the alternating stone brick and cobblestone pattern that I described to you. Uh, here is some more detail of upside down cobblestone stairs as well as a few cobblestone slabs and walls alternating with each other. And that will form the, I believe that is the entire door frame done here. Of course, it's the same on both sides here. So let's go along the sides here. And as you can see, you're just extending up the windows with the repeating pattern and extending up the walls and the columns all the way around. This is probably one of the simplest phases you will be doing. 
and I expect that this will go up fairly quickly. And let me give you a good view of this corner over here, as it's a little complicated over in this section. I'm going to just pause and build it according to the pattern that you see on screen. All right, with that done, we can now, I think we can go ahead and move on to the next phase. Going up another two blocks with our column drums and our walls, as you can see here. Fairly standard stuff. The same on the outside along here. Along the back. And along the inside over here. You're pretty much just extending everything up another two blocks. And I believe the same holds true for this phase over here. Extending up the column drums again. Alternating the cobblestone walls. Both on the inside and the outside. Continuing the window pattern. Another two blocks up, you're doing the exact same thing I just described to you over there. And now getting over here, we're going up, of course, two more blocks. But at this phase, we start running into some detail work that we need to take care of. So for this, I believe there are no changes out here on the exterior. Um, except for at the top of this phase, you want to start adding in this ledge of upside down cobblestone stairs at the top of this phase. You want to do this pretty much all the way around the building. Every place there is not a window along the sides here, you want to add this ledge. And also at this phase on the interior here, we have some changes. Uh, you also want to add the ledge over here on the interior, by the way, over there and along the, the front here. You want to put in that ledge. And in the middle here, you want to start putting in these chandeliers, the bases for them anyway. Uh, that is if you want to build them from the ground up instead of waiting to put in the ceiling. And the measurements for these, the easiest way to get this is you can just draw a line straight from the side of the column there. And that looks like that it is going to be five blocks from the ledge. And how far apart are they? And they are going to be seven blocks apart. I think they're all pretty much seven blocks apart, all the way back. So you can use that measurement to space them out. They're going to be the same on uh, both sides here. But at this point, you're just putting in a cobblestone wall and a bit of glowstone. And on the windows here, we're starting to put in the tracery for the top of these. And you're just going to do that with a block of diorite here instead of putting in a full block of blue stained glass. And you want to do this for all the windows, except the middle one around here is a little bit different. You're putting in a block of diorite again, but you're putting it at one block lower than what it is around here. And just connect them in the middle with some diorite, oh, like so. So, and with that done, your building now should look like this around here. I'll go over here and show you what I did with the torches, placing them behind the columns over here. We've got a few on the sides around here at the back. And a few around the front here as well. So I think that covers that phase. So we will now go up two more blocks where I think we're just putting on another block of diorite. But on top of that, we're putting in the beginnings of our Corinthian capitals to finish off the tops of our columns. And we're doing that by putting in some upside down stone brick stairs along here. And along the back walls here, we're just extending those up. But on the top of the lintels here, we're hiding some torches alternating around here. And on the exterior here, we're continuing to add the bases of the capitals to every column all around the back here. 
and you can see that on the interior here we're doing some more detail for the tracery on the windows and you want to just build it like you see here build every window exactly the same except for the center one which you're going to build like this just sort of put in an X pattern of diorite here and start putting in some more glass on top of that and on the interior here we're building up our chandeliers a bit more with another block of glowstone a chiseled stone brick on the top here and some cobblestone walls on the sides here now as an alternate you can use the quartz walls or a different type of wall if you want to for these chandeliers this is just what I chose for this particular building because we use a, a fair bit of cobblestone on the interior here so I chose the cobblestone walls to match that and I think that that is actually all there is to do in that phase so we will continue up another two blocks we're putting in some right side up stone brick stairs along here then on top of that some upside down cobblestone stairs and we're doing this on all the columns we're continuing the walls up on the exterior here we're putting in a little bit of a detail on the interior here with our glass we're putting in sort of a ring of blue stained glass around here except in the middle here we're putting in just four a light blue stained glass panes around in here and you want to build every window exactly the same with the capitals on the interior here the corners over here and the middle over here is a little bit different it's mostly just filling in glass at this point we're also finishing off the bottoms of the chandeliers here with just a bit of a wall here and then the nether brick fences here or whichever fence you choose to suspend them from the ceiling will be done at this stage so I think that covers everything there is to talk about on this stage so we will move on to the next one where we're just about to finish our Corinthian capitals here which we're doing with some more upside down stone brick stairs except at the top here we're coming out an additional block around here before we put in our stairs and you're doing this again for every column on the building however many there are and filling in the walls in the middle here all around the sides and we're also at this stage we're finishing off the windows at the top here except on the outside we're extending out the tracery on the top to form a little diorite arch here in between the columns at the top here and you want to do these all exactly the same all the way around do the wall at the back and do a similar thing around here for the exterior of the center window here on the inside and the outside and for the chandeliers you're just extending up the cords a little bit we're going to be doing that for a couple of phases before we get all the way up to the roof and at this phase we should have all of the columns on the building complete aren't you glad and we can begin building the entablature which for those of you who don't know after you finish building a roman style structure after you've done the columns immediately on top of that you always want to add the entablature and we will be doing that by adding in some upside down cobblestone stairs and some right side up stone brick stairs and a band all the way around the building sitting on top of the columns but not exactly overhanging it you want to leave a little two block thing here for the Corinthian capitals to stick out just a little bit and you're doing that all the way around the building like so you're also doing this on the interior along here 
And you can see I put in some torches to add some more hidden lighting at this stage here. So I'll go around here, give you a good slow view of this. Also underneath here, you're adding in just some stone bricks as a lintel for the columns to support the entablature. And you want to go all around the interior back here and add it as well. And as you can see, this wall over here stops and we have a little torch on top of it. And that is where this back here stops as well. And the chandeliers are just being extended up. Another two blocks with the fences along there. Uh, now, in between the columns along the roof here, we want to start adding a little detail here. After you connect your columns with a stone brick lintel like this in between them, you want to put a square of diorite like this, and you want to put them in between the columns here. And they're all going to be the same size, except for the one in the middle here. It's going to be a little odd. So build that out like you see done here. And once that is done, we will move over here to, I think this is probably going to be, aside from constructing the base, the simplest part of the entire building because you want to go along on top of what you built along here of the entablature and just build a two block high band of diorite all the way around the building in a big giant rectangle like you see done here. And you can leave it hollow on the inside here. I made it solid for the most part, but if you leave this hollow, you can cut down on the amount of diorite you're going to need by a fair bit. However, on the inside, you want to add the same band of diorite on top of the interior entablature. Done along here. And as I've said, from here to here, you can probably leave that hollow if you really want to. And extend the chandeliers up. Another two blocks as well. As well. And uh, I think that very quickly covers that phase. Very simple. But on the next one, it gets more complicated. Because you're going to be adding in alternating blocks of chiseled stone bricks... And in between those, you want to alternate upside down cobblestone stairs to serve as the dentils for the entablature. And that's what these little upside down details here are called. They're called the dentils because they're supposed to represent teeth. And on top of those, you want to have a layer of upside down stone brick stairs that sits on top of that. But that comes out a little, little bit from that. And this exact pattern that I've shown you here, you want to do this absolutely all the way around the building as you see done here. And as always, I think you can continue to leave the interior here hollow. Except on the interior here, we've got a little bit of detail to talk about. You want to do the interior pattern for the entablature along here, just the same as the exterior, except on top of that, one thing I've done to hide some lighting for the roof here is I've included a band of glowstone sitting behind it in a big rectangle like this. And you will see why I've done this in the next phase. And we're also putting in the fixtures at the top that hold the chandeliers up. So once you've got to this phase, you want to put in some chiseled stone bricks and some cobblestone walls made like this pattern here, because on top of this, we're going to be putting a little bit more glowstone to help light up our roof, or rather our ceiling, so we can see what's going on on the inside. Um, now at this phase, we get to the point where the entablature is complete. And we're going to start adding on the roof, which will finish our temple. But this is going to be a slower phase to get accomplished. 
Because as you can see, we've got quite a lot of detail that's starting to go on here. The first thing we have to talk about is the pediment up here for our roof. That's the triangular section up here. For the sculptures for this, I just pretty much add in these stone brick stairs. And they're fairly randomly laid out, actually. I don't put too much thought into these, except you want to make it the same on both sides. M meaning, whatever you do on this side, just do the same on that side. Or conversely, I suppose you could do it randomly on both sides. I haven't actually tried that. It might look pretty good. But just play with it or copy what I've done here, whichever you prefer. Now behind that, you want to start putting in a band of red nether brick. And you also want to come along here and start adding in the pitch of our roof. Now the pitch of this roof is going to go up in two block sections. Um, well, it's actually like four block sections here, but it's going to be on top of them and on bottom. You're going to put stone brick slabs, meaning you want stone brick slabs on the bottom here, and you'll see that we'll have stone brick slabs on the top over there, which is going to give us the correct slant for this roof. There's also a little detail over here, cobblestone that we're going to have for the side finels here. And on the top here, you want to put in alternating stone bricks, slabs, and cobblestone stairs like so. And you want to have these mirror the upside down ones below here. In other words, that should be the same as that there. And this is a pattern that you want to pretty much ruthlessly apply to the entire building along all the corners, well, along the sides anyway. And I should mention what you do on the front or the triangular pediment is exactly the same on the back here. It's just a mirrored version, and it is exactly the same. Uh, now, for the roof tiles along here, you want to start building out this pattern here. Now, you can probably get away with using less red nether brick on this phase than I have used. You can see over here what the pattern is going to B, but at this phase over here, we're just getting started with it. You want to count out, I think it's, um, it goes in like a two block, two to one increments, meaning that this two blocks will be the same, and then there's this one block, then two blocks, one block, and so on and so forth, and that's how the roof tile pattern is laid out here. This is This is done with alternating red nether brick and blackstone slabs. You can use nether brick slabs also if you prefer. Now along here, I'll just give you a good look at this and you can measure it out from this and give yourself a guide to help you do the rest of the roof here. As you can see, the middle sections here are just repeating patterns once you get these laid out. It's only on the ends here that it's a little bit different. And I think we should also go inside because we need to talk about the ceiling. And as you can see at this point here, it is open to the sky. Because we have our coffered ceiling up here, that's what is meant by having these beams with squares in the middle. This is called a coffered design because they have these little, these little coffers on the inside here is what these are called. But you just want to go along here and make three by three squares over the entire ceiling, except at the front here, because this is Minecraft, we have to sometimes compromise. So it's got two by two, it was a two by three along the front here. Although ideally, if we were doing this in real life, we would not be constrained with the one block system of Minecraft, which means that we would have them all be the same, but for this design, to make it work, I had to have this uh, two block thing at the front here. And I should also show you why we did the glowstone, because you want to leave a gap in between here of cobblestone. You want to have your glowstone be able to shine along here, because as you will see later on, this is going to help add some lighting along the sides of our roof here. 
so we don't have to have a bunch of torches up there. And I suppose if you want to save a bit of glowstone, you could just do, you could alternate your glowstone up here as well and just have a bit of glowstone and then a bit of cobble. But well, we have the tops of our chandelier holders up here. They are attached to the ceiling in this way. If you measured the chandeliers out like I told you from the start with and you have been building them as you go along, this will serve as a guide to help you put in the cross hatching for the coffered ceiling. And I'll just land along here and give you a good view of this from the bottom so you can see how everything relates to each other. And with that done, I think the next phase we will have the interior complete because we're just about to put a layer of gold on top of that. And we can't actually see it because I have filled the ceiling full of cobblestone, actually. And I think the only thing we need to talk about from this point on is the roof. So we have our side decorative finales here. They're like the, th the things that we built at the bottom here that we started with, if you remember. Except they're now on the top. And they're also going to be on the uh, center of the triangular pediment. Along here, well, let's start with the, the rest of the pediment, as you can see. So, to get this, if you just want to start with, from here you can build a two-block thing of stone bricks, then come along here and start going in four-block layer increments like that, except on the bottoms of these along here, you want to start putting in stone slabs underneath there, like that, and on the top here, you want to put them there, which is going to be on the, the reverse section from there, and you want to do that pretty much whenever you want to build a Roman a roof slant. I would, I would highly recommend going with this particular pitch and not going up at a straight 45 degree angle. You want to go up and make it a little bit more gentle. And I'll give you a good view along here of what I did with just spamming down the stone bricks. And as I've said, you can feel free to put in your own pattern along there. And on the side along here, I'll give you a view of the repeating pattern that we have for the roof tiles here. Once you do one section here of roof tiles, the other sections right beside it are going to be all exactly the same, except on the ends here, it's a little bit shorter. And the back of the roof here is exactly the same as the front. And of course the other side is exactly the same. And I think I need to go in and show you the finished ceiling. So if we go in here, we now see that we have a solid gold coffered ceiling. And while well, this is gold in my texture pack, by the way, it plays very well with the glowstone, I think. However, additional colors, if you, did, if you don't really like the gold, uh, substitutions for this could be more lapis down here, put on the top, or you could use obsidian. Or if you wanted to use more cheap materials, you could resort to using blackstone or even basalt. Might look pretty good up there. Or possibly some more uh, red nether brick would be acceptable as well. But I will leave that entirely up to you. You can also, if you were feeling adventurous, you could use a little glazed terracotta up there, I suppose. Not really a block I use much of, but um, it, it might fit up there. Certain blocks of it. So, we're extending up another two blocks. By this point, you should get a firm grasp on what we're doing with the roof around here. You're just extending it all the way up until it meets at the top up here. Doing the same thing for the pediment around here. And you can put on the, your two block tall gold um, pinnacles up here to finish off the decorative finales that we have on the 
sides of the roof around, around here. And the front is the same again. Uh, and since the interior is finished, I can now just remark on the roof up here. You want to extend the roof tile pattern all the way up to the top. Uh, and in between those, you're of course putting in these little divisions made with uh, cobblestone here. I did this to break up the roof design a little bit and give it a little bit um, more character than it might otherwise have. Just a decorative technique that I use. Uh, and along the top here, as you can see, you're building another golden finnel here, exactly the same as you built over here. You're just putting it on the top along here. And for the top ridge here, you're putting in some more decorative elements made of cobblestone stairs that are going to be facing each other. And I can just go ahead and go over here and show you the finished design for those. They're sort of like little um, uh, trefoils or clover leaves that extend all the way down the spine of the top of the roof here on both sides. And they end with the decorative finnels here complete on both ends of the building. And when you place your last two blocks of gold on the top of the pediment there, your large Roman temple will be at long last complete. So this finishes the main tutorial for the building itself. I will now show you how to do the 3x3 piston door. All right, here we are at the 3x3 piston door sort of sub tutorial that I'm going to be doing. Now, this is a standard design door that I used. The design is not originally mine. This is, of course, a very old design made by uh, Ethos Lab many years ago, but it's never really broken on me except when used in bedrock versions. So I've just stuck with it. And for this design, I'm just going to show you the slices here. These are all one block tall slices, by the way. And this is why you collected all the smooth stone slabs in the redstone. So at the corners here, you're putting down some sticky pistons like you see, and some st stone slabs. And then on top of those, you're coming along with a bit of redstone dust, and you're using your redstone repeaters made down here. I believe they're all set at zero, by the way. And your stone slabs on top of those. And you're putting in your redstone dust along here with a sticky piston down beneath there. On the sides here, we have some floating blocks because we're going to be putting some dust on those to connect to the top here. And we're putting in a layer of cobblestone here because this is going to be the floor area where we're going to be putting in our stone pressure plates and the bottom three blocks for our door here, as well as the side sticky pistons over here. And going up another block, we're putting in our piston door here with some more pistons on the side there and some little gaps here for the redstone dust on the sides here done like so and continuing up you have your three sticky pistons stacked on top of each other like that on both sides and the redstone dust connections going through here and over here i believe we start putting in the top of our door with its piston which is going to be Somewhere around here, I think. It's over here in this section. So we have our dust connecting like that. I believe it connects on this side. Over here. And is made like that. Hopefully that's fairly clear. It's not that complicated of a redstone device. And there are many other tutorials of this on YouTube, and redstone isn't exactly my forte, but I've included a little model of it here because I assume that you will probably want to add it to your structure right here. 
But if you don't, you can always just use standard wooden doors and leave the piston door out entirely. As I've said, I do have one of those on my smaller Roman temple building over here, which, by the way, to correct an error in a previous tutorial video, uh, let's go in here because I neglected to show off the interior that I put in this one, which can give you a different idea of what you might be able to use for materials. As you can see, we've got another uh, glass floor in here, except it doesn't have the glowstone in the bottom of it. But we've got some end rods and some nether quartz and some prismarine and some quartz for the Corinthian capitals in here as well. But at the top here, we have some gold ore to serve as the tracery and ribbing for a barrel vault that I managed to squeeze inside the roof of this particular building. Because as you can see, we have a semicircular arch here. And then to get a barrel vault, all you do is you just extend the semi-circular arch all the way to the back here because we have four pilasters on the inside here. We also have these four arches, and in between these, we have some rib vaulting in between those done with a gold ore and some glowstone, which blends very nicely with gold ore, by the way, at the top here and just red nether brick and obsidian details done inside of those here. So for those of you that have built my small Roman temple, but you didn't really know what to put inside of it, here is my suggestion for what you might want to do. And as always, if the tutorial was a little unclear in certain sections, I'm going to be providing this entire world that I've shown to you today in the description of the video. So this concludes the large Roman temple tutorial. I hope you have fun building it in your own worlds and thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.